Good morning. Welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church and our celebration of the Holy Eucharist and our celebration of the life of Brian Nestandi. We ask that you please take a moment to silence your electronic devices. Thank you. Our celebrant is Father Gregory. Our opening hymn is Amazing Grace, number 614 in your glory and praise, 614. Please rise as we begin our celebration. Good morning. I am Father Gregory Elder. I'm a pastor here. I would like to welcome all of you to Sacred Heart Church. We're going to begin uh, just one second, but first, a couple announcements. I want to point out we have water fountains and restrooms at the back of the church on the right-hand side. I want to give a special welcome to all of you who come here from out of town or from other faith and religious traditions. You're always welcome here. At Sacred Heart, we welcome people of all backgrounds, orientations, ages, uh, colors, and so on. So we're glad that you are here. And I especially want to welcome parents who brought their children. Uh, we don't care how much noise they make. Children are always a blessing from God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Share with him in eternal glory. And I confess her word remains in holy water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, as we come before God's altar, we pause to call to mind our mistakes and our flaws, but also, above all, God's mercy. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, 
Our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Brian, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from the Bible. I'd like to invite Mason to come forward and read the first one. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nation and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his cares with it, with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 23. You can find it on page 183 of your seasonal missalette. Please join me in singing, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. And all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor present things nor future things nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God and Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Word of God. on the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that... Where I am going, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to Jesus, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated just for a moment. Any funeral is tinged with both sorrow and with glory, Uh, but the passing of a prominent member of the community, a political leader, requires a little bit of reflection and thought. Uh, Our brother Brian uh, was a man who was elected by the people uh, to serve and represent first us first in Sacramento and then in Washington, but I want to think about something for a moment. What are leaders like in the Bible? Let's go back in time and think about what the scriptures are like and the rulers. They they didn't have elections, obviously, in those days. Uh, They had kings. 
But in those days, the days of the Bible, for the large part, kings and leaders were not people who were locked up in the palace, far away from everybody, ruling over thousands and thousands and thousands of square miles, uh, like modern kingdoms, you know, like France or England or Russia. They ruled over tiny little spaces, one city at the most, maybe, a small city uh, like the city of Jabin or the city of Uruk. Those are cities that were long, long, long buried and go buried in the sand, but the ancient peoples knew of them. And the kings in those days were not stationed behind rows of machine guns. They actually had to walk among the people. They were seen in the marketplace. They were seen in the temples. They were seen in uh, public banquets uh, because in those days people wanted to believe in their leaders, and they wanted to see that king because the king was always a reminder that things were going to be safe for that city. Our brother Brian was that kind of biblical leader. He was not hard to find or uh, hidden away someplace. Uh, he walked around where people could see him. Uh, I'm sure they had security, but we here at Sacred Heart no. He was somebody that we saw on a regular basis, both at worship and very often at the school over on my right-hand side where his children attended. He was someone that people could approach and speak to uh, and hear from. And uh, that promotes so much trust, it's hard to express it. And that also reminds us of the great ruler, the great king, our Savior Jesus Christ. Because Christ is not hidden away from you and I. He walks among us, unseen perhaps, but he is here. He uh, is at the side of every baby that is conceived and born, in the side of every person who passes into eternity. He is always there for us to talk to, to hear from us, and to remind us that we are never alone. We are never abandoned. Jesus talked about this when he said, don't let your hearts be troubled. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. There is a place for Brian in heaven. There is a place for you and I in heaven if we are willing to open our hearts and minds to the love of God as Brian did. That's biblical leadership, being there where the people are, where we can see them and that they can see us. And we know, of course, that in Christ, who will raise us all on the last day, God has a special place for Brian and his family. I want to tell you, you will see him again. Not in discomfort, not in rags, uh, not in something bad, but better and more alive than he was even on earth. That's the gift of Christ to all who follow him. It is there that we will see him in that bright place. There's no more sorrows and no more sadness, uh, no more anger and no more pain, because that is the gift our heavenly King, Jesus Christ, has in store for all who call to him. Let us stand and pray for our brother Brian. Let us lift our burdens, our grief, and our family needs to God, our creator. May we echo in prayer the hope for eternal life for our beloved who have died and through the promise of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. For our universal church, who may know the way to Christ Jesus and be willing to live this truth, seeking justice and hope for all the world, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to face the reality of death within our lives and families, that we may be consoled by Jesus Christ, who is our way, our truth, and our life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the health and healing of our family members, that we may be attentive to the needs of those whom we love, especially as we all face loss and grief together. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the dignity of all human life, that we may lift the poor and the suffering into the life and holiness of Christ Jesus, May we all be freed from bodily and emotional pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a new understanding of faith in our grief, that we may know the way to forgiveness, mercy, and peace in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a beloved brother, whom we bury this day, may the angels herald him home to the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift our prayers and our burdens to you alone. Come to us in our need. Lift our grief from our hearts and help us to live here on earth with the hope of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated while we prepare the altar. Our offertory hymn is number 600, Be Not Afraid, number 600. You shall pass the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and We continue now with the most holy sacrifice of the Mass, which we offer for our brother Brian. A couple quick words, uh, since not everyone's familiar with Catholic ritual. Uh, you saw me use holy water at the beginning of the service. You'll see it again at the end. Holy water represents to us the waters of baptism, which our brother received and which washes away our sins. Uh, you saw the incense a moment ago. You'll see it again at the end of Mass. Uh, incense represents the prayers of God's saints rising before the throne of Christ. That candle you see over there on my left-hand side by the urn, we call that the Paschal candle. It burns on only three occasions, uh, at Easter time, uh, at baptisms, and at a funeral mass, because all of those three times remind us of the resurrection from Christ and his presence standing among us. We continue now with mass. When it comes time for communion, if you're Catholic and able to receive, just come down the center aisle. But if we need to take the Eucharist to anyone in the pews, please let us know. If you're not Catholic or Catholic and not prepared to receive, we still love you. Uh, if you like, you can come forward, and I'd be honored to give you a special blessing. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Brian, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation so that, should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Please kneel or sit. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alberto, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants who mourn for Brian and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memories we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those whom you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to acknowledge, bless, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his heavenly Father, Giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant Brian, who has gone before us with a sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant him, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and hope with the fellowship of the holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Upon you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Come upon you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Come upon you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn will be number 498, One Bread, One Body, 498. One bread, one body. Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are Oh, oh, oh. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Brian, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few more prayers, and after those, the liturgical ministers will process out. But please stay. We're not quite done yet. The family has some things they would like to share with you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal arrest granted him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Brian in the sure and certain hope that, together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you've bestowed upon Brian in this life. They are the signs of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet again in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord unfold you in his mercy. May you find it.
the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord unfold you in his mercy. May you find it. of this world he is now dead. In your sight, did he live forever? Forgive what other sins he has committed through human weakness, and your goodness grant everlasting peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 606 on Eagle's Wings, 606. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite Hayden and Sophia and Estande to please come forward. You know, there's... There's really not a lot of words that uh, that really do the job here. So I I do believe that what's understood doesn't need to be said, and I think all of us understand what kind of guy my dad was. He meant a lot to a lot of people. Um, that's obvious here today. I've heard so many good things over the past few days here. So many awesome stories. Um, and grief has been a weird process. You know, there's so many overwhelming moments of sadness and regret and all those things, but um, I found a lot of comfort in seeing how many people that he really meant something to. Um, and I know how much he missed his, his mom and his dad and his big brother and Knowing that they're all together somewhere, that, that brings me a lot of peace as well. Really, I just 
want to say thank you to everyone. Um, it is just amazing to hear so many kind words and, and see so many faces that, that his life touched. And I know all of his memories will live on with me. I hope they do with you guys as well. Um, you know, my dad left a big, beautiful family uh, and so many good friends. I'll miss him a lot. Um, I would like to echo Hayden's earlier statement, just say thank you all for being here today. It really does mean just the world's best to see how loved he was and how much of an impact he really made in so many different people's lives. Um, I prepared a few words. I am not as good off the cuff as my brother, but uh, since my dad's passing, my family and I have been going through a lot of old photo albums and noticed he saved a lot of our birthday cards we made him or Father's Day cards. And as I was thinking more and more about what I was going to say here, uh, I just noticed that there was this big common theme of gratitude. So I'm just going to tell you a few reasons that I was grateful for my dad. Uh, I was grateful for how intelligent he was. Um, he possessed a keen intellect, a thirst for knowledge that never wavered. He taught me the importance of education and how to approach life with a curious mind. When most kids were being read books like Green Eggs and Ham or Good Night Moon to fall asleep, my dad was quizzing Hayden and I on the uh, current political climate. <laughs> we were asked questions such as, who is our current state assemblyman? Um, who's our current governor? How many years can a president hold office? And on and on until our little brains got exhausted and we ended up falling asleep. He was always so excited to share his insights and advice with those around him and his wisdom and his guidance, something I will cherish forever. I am grateful for the kindness my father showed everyone he met. It was a kindness that knew no bounds. It was evident that my dad's passion for helping others went beyond just his title as a state assemblyman or politician. Through his work, it was clear that he genuinely cared about making a positive impact on the lives of those around him dedicated countless hours to listening to his concerns with his constituents, tirelessly worked to find solutions to improve quality of life for everyone. His compassion and his dedication to serving others truly set him apart. He showed me the value of compassion and empathy, but most importantly, when to take action and when, oh, sorry, when to take action to make our community a little bit better. I'm grateful for the humor my dad brought to our lives. His quick wit and infectious laughter never failed be a light even in the darkest of times. I'll never forget him walking around the house, passing one of us kids, singing something like, hey, Sophia, it's your birthday, or something dumb, even if it was any day of the year. <laughs> Spent a lot of my time with my dad being silly, hoping to hear that great infectious laugh. That laugh is something I will never forget. <sighs> Losing my hero is the hardest thing I've ever had to endure. He was the person I looked up to the most. His intelligence, his kindness, and his humor were my guiding light in his absence. Has left a void I failed would not be filled, or I feared would not be filled. But despite the pain of his loss, I will continue to hold on to this gratitude in my heart when I think of him. Gratitude for the lessons he taught me, for the memories we shared, and for the unconditional love he had for me and all the kids. His legacy will live on through Hayden, Sadie, Tad, Mason, Molly, and Savannah and myself. As we strive to live our lives with compassion, courage, and kindness, just how she showed us to do. I would also like to extend my gratitude to all of you for being here today, being a part of his life, and being a comfort to us. I hope you carry some of this gratitude in your hearts with you as well. Thank you. I'd just like to add one thing really quick. Sophia touched on it, but I, I do believe my dad was the funniest guy in the world. <laughs> and I know he made everyone in this room laugh at least once. Uh, so I'd love to hear some stories about what, you've, uh, what you shared with him. So thank you, everyone. Thank you both. I'd like to ask Mr. Manny Perez to come forward.
Could you understand the family, loved ones, friends, and all those touched by his greater than life persona? It is my honor to stand here before you in this beautiful Catholic Church, Sacred Heart, and saying our final goodbye to one of Coachella Valley's own sons, Mr. Brian Estandi. How does one capture the essence of a loved one's life taken way too early in the reflective moments we have together in this space and time? How do you pay honest tribute and honor the person who had an endless positive impact on so many? Simply said, how do I put into words the memories, the images, discussions, our differences, the adventures, the personal moments, the struggles and victories of my advisor, my ally, my mentor, my best friend, and my brother of our buddy boy, Mr. Brian Estandi. Now, for those of you who might not know, Buddy Boy was a term of endearment. He would nickname those of us that were closest to him. And it was his way of expressing the wonderful friendship that he so much appreciated and honored. I must also acknowledge that only with the blessings of love, truth, and wisdom stemming from a higher source is it at all possible to meet this moment. In preparation for this occasion that God has afforded us, I had an opportunity to speak with a few members of my staff, and a few other individuals in search of guidance and strength for this delivery. In particular, Mr. Fred Bell, whom upon learning of Brian's death, he immediately wrote his condolences in an email that he sent for the world to read. He wrote, he was a man who gave enormously of himself. Brian had the great humanist's capacity to inspire people, to cheer them, to give them lift. And yet, of course, he was more than all that. He had a side more evident to those of us who worked with him than to the rest of the world. He was shrewd. He was decisive. And that was always when he was at his best. No matter how heated the arguments were, he was always the coolest man in the room. One might not always agree with his position, but he always engendered respect. Thank you, Fred, for your uplifting message about Brian at the height of our grieving pain and sorrow. Now, Brian and I were opposites in so many ways. While he was raised near the beaches of Orange County, I was raised here in the desert and the agricultural fields of the Coachella Valley. While he was a simple meat and potato guy, I would prefer a taco and enchilada. 
And while he was a Republican, I so happy to be a Democrat. And if you haven't noticed, Brian was white and I was Latino. And I am Latino. So how did these two guys, coming from different walks of life, grow to become the closest and best of friends? Well, with all that in mind and at the core of it all, none of that mattered to Brian. He appreciated differences and was much more than just a regular decent man, but a man of great integrity whose convictions led him to be loyal to what was just, right, and humane. No matter the situation, at the drop of a dime, he would stop everything and be there next to you, physically and mentally, for a friend in need of support and help. Brian was spitfire witty and filled with unexpected humor. When you least expect it, he would lift the spirits of everyone present during a tough and awkward discussion by surprising us all with a funny one-liner or a youthful joke. Or he would use spirited language that I'm not allowed to repeat in this house of God. And although he loved music, that being rock and roll, 80s music, or even Mexican banda, he showed off his uncoordinated and off-the-wall dance moves at parties and gatherings. <laughs> For those split seconds, he didn't care what others thought of him. Because of that very moment, he was beyond himself. He let go and become a dreamer, a visionary of hope who loved life and the company around him. Time after time, I witnessed how he loved living in the moment. And there are videos to prove how bad he danced. Over the last week, we processed the devastating news of the passing of our friend, Brian. This has hit us all hard, especially because it was abrupt and without warning. We all know that Brian had so much more to do, to explore and to share with the world to make it a better place. He was 60 years old when he passed away unexpectedly. But Brian was a husband and a father, a son, a brother, an uncle. And he is survived by a beautiful family, his wife Gina, seven children and grandson. Quite often, he would share his love for the family, but he would bring up memories of soccer games or skiing in Colorado. He talked about going to Austin to see his daughter and was very proud of his son that worked in DC and on the presidential campaign. He loved the conversations he had with each and every one of them and found, found solace in seeing each one of them become professional young adults. And although he would joke about how they all finally left the house, he truly meant that he missed them. The man had a gentle touch and was proud of them all. Like every father, he simply wanted his beautiful children to find their own path and be successful. To his and Gina's credit, hard work and generosity, they achieved it. Professionally, Brian was successful in managing a consulting firm and was happy to help a variety of clients in healthcare, the building industry, energy, air quality, water, renewables. He enjoyed working on behalf of others 
But even more, he loved it when he gained a win. When he gained a victory for his clients. He immersed himself in the process of solving and troubleshooting issues in order to move the needle forward. But before finally hanging his shingle, Brian was a political lion in which he skillfully maneuvered through the rough and tumble of our nation, California and the county of Riverside. As you know, Brian graduated from Cal State Fullerton and started his career out of college, working on Michael Huffington's campaign for Congress, followed by the congressional campaign of Sonny Bono. Brian served as Sonny Bono's chief of staff in Washington, D.C. And for you as Representative Mary Bono, who succeeded her husband in Congress in 1998. In 2008, Brian was elected to serve in the California State Assembly. Brian and I entered the assembly together representing different districts and different political parties within the Coachella Valley. We both served three two-year terms for a total of six years. But it was there in Sacramento where we struck a friendship and it grew closer as we worked on helping our state through the Great Recession. Brian successfully authored legislation on metal theft to ensure access to the bump and grind trail, to designate a portion of Highway 74 to Roy Wilson Memorial Highway, among several of his bills. He also authored a bill to create a salt and sea license plate. He also passed the bill to allow Native American tribes to join JPA, Joint Power Authorities. Brian's father, Bruce, also served in the legislature. Learning from his father, Bruce, Brian would often speak of what it was like in the legislature in the 70s and the 80s. He would describe how back then, in the spirit of bipartisanship, Democrats and Republicans worked to find common ground in the legislative process. And although it was not easy, it was alive and embraced in the halls of the state capitol. That was how things got done. Brian exhibited openness to political dialogue and welcomed differences of opinion in a way in which many others in this line of work could not. He personified statesmanship and lived up to those good old days. To paraphrase one of our colleagues from the legislature, former assembly member Mike Gatto, once said of Brian, if we had more people like him on each side of the aisle, there would be more hope. In Brian's assembly days, he even gave up a leadership post in his party because he voted for a bill that the minority leader at the time did not support. Brian took it in stride and stated out loud that all he did was do the right thing for California. The belief in our democracy exemplified by Brian's work across the aisle is reflected in how many people from all aspects of the political spectrum have called me in recent days to reach out and offer their condolences. From Republican members of Congress to the many Democratic Assembly members that respected him. Now, when I joined the Board of Supervisors, we kept our partnership going in a true spirit of bipartisanship, working as a team to serve Riverside County and our four district constituents. I came to lean on him as one of my most trusted confidants. From 2015 to 21, Brian was Riverside County's first deputy county executive officer. In this role, he coordinated legislative needs between county agencies and built a stronger legislative presence for Riverside County at the federal and state level. He really enhanced communication and bridged the connection between our supervisor offices 
and the executive office. He changed how our priorities and projects got relayed and gave our legislative programs and platforms a penetrating voice in the most powerful circles. And because of Brian's persistence, that dates back to his sunny Bono days, the Sound Sea North Lake Pilot Project is finally a viable project and has the support of Sacramento. Because of Brian, finally, our county matters. And although he was in the executive office, Brian was very much an extension of my team. And everyone on our staff loved Brian. His sense of humor and the technical help he provided us was second to none. Often we would laugh while poking fun at one another, especially when we would show up to events and I would jokingly say, I don't know who invited this guy as I pointed to him, and he said the same about me. <laughs> All fun aside, we were a close duo. I always appreciated his perspective and learned about leadership from an exchange of ideas with Brian. After some intense and vigorous conversations or after long debriefs about a community issue, we both knew within our hearts that our tag team approach was unique and powerful. Friends and family, that is only a microcosm of Brian and what I know of him. For those everlasting experiences and beautiful memories, I, along with my family, including my wife, my wife Gladys, my parents, my sons, my extended family, will sadly miss his larger-than-life presence. May Brian's courageous and unselfish spirit forever be our guiding beacon of light as we continue to navigate the chaos that surrounds us each and every day. Let us all always, when times get tough and, and unmanageable, ask ourselves, what would Brian do? How would good old buddy boy take action in this heated moment that may seem unsurmountable? I wholeheartedly believe that Brian's memory will encourage our will to make positive and decisive action with an unapologetic, friendly smile. Our dear friend Brian Estani is now with God and we keep his family in our prayers. So long, buddy boy. And to our next adventure, we love you. Please stand. In one moment, I'll invite the family to follow me to the door of the church so you can greet them. And immediately after that, we do have refreshments. If you go up and to the left through the iron gates, uh, you'll see the table set up. Sir. Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. Please. Have a seat. My apologies. Sorry, everybody. One more. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Gina and family, I'm so sorry for your loss. My name is Brian Conklin. Brian was my longest and closest friend. He was a brother to me. Today, we pay tribute to a man who meant so much to all of us in so many different ways. Brian was authentic, genuine, a pillar of strength, a companion in joy and sorrow, a public servant, and above all else, he was family. His loss has created a void in our hearts that can't be filled, but his legacy lives on in the memories we share, the difference he made, and the lessons we learned from him. It is an honor for me to share some of my thoughts about him with you today. 
I met Brian 32 years ago in 1992 on former Congressman Michael Huffington's first campaign for Congress. Later that year, Brian joined Huffington's staff and a few months later hired me. Shortly after Brian moved here to the desert to run Sonny's first campaign for Congress, he called me to come join him. At the end of 1994, we moved to Washington, D.C. together after Sonny won. Brian and Sabrina were the only people I knew in the desert then in D.C. I think I ate dinner at their house every night for a year. We drove to and worked for them together every day. They basically adopted me for a while. My wife, Regina, and I still live in D.C. And as such, my, my, my relationship with Brian over the past many years has mostly been texts, phone calls, and a few dinners a year when he was in Washington or I could get to California. He was family to me. We were always there for each other's big stuff. If it were possible to send texts from heaven, I'd have many right now from Brian, most with a smart aleck tone, making fun of me for something. This text would certainly be funny and at least in part true, but he would also know that this is hard for me, for all of us. And he'd be sure to end the text string with something like, thanks man, hang in there. That's the friend Brian was to me. Brian was my first professional mentor. As I've been reading posts and speaking with people about Brian, I learned that he was a mentor to so many of us. I don't think he even realized what a gift that was. He taught us about resilience in the face of adversity, about the importance of following our passions, about staying true to who you are and what you believe. He could turn an ordinary day into an extraordinary one with his infectious laughter, his insightful conversations, and his boundless generosity. Working for elected officials, especially working for Sonny and Mary, meant a lot to the both of us. We were often in a little over our heads, but he could lead us through it. One afternoon, after an especially tense morning working for Congressman Huffington, Brian abruptly stood up and said, let's go. I followed him out the door down the street. He was walking with purpose and intensity. I thought I was gonna be fired. We crossed the street and into the local YMCA. We spent the next three hours in our business suits playing ping pong. <laughs> he knew we needed that. We laughed. He probably beat me, but certainly competitive. Every so often, not a lot, we'd go back and play a little more ping pong. He taught me yet another lesson. One of the things we all loved about Brian, he never missed a chance to be funny. He used humor to cut through tension, diffuse a situation, or just to make someone laugh. He had a smile that made you feel like everything was gonna be all right. And Brian was fiercely loyal. His moral compass was true and accurate. He was a man of integrity whose actions spoke louder than words. He valued friendship and family above all else, and he treated every person he met with kindness and respect. And he was grateful. Grateful for the opportunity to serve, of course, but especially grateful for his children. He was so proud of each of you. For the last many years in particular, we didn't have a conversation where he wasn't bragging on at least one of you, probably all of you. He loved being your dad. When Brian was contemplating moving back to California and running for office, we spent countless off hours talking it through. What it would mean for his family, was he up to the task? Could he make a difference, and if so, how? And as you heard from Manny, he had many successes. But as it goes in politics, a few times he came up short. My wife, Regina, and I were with him and Gina on election night in 2014, one of those days when he came up just a bit short. He was just disappointed, of course, a bit sad, but didn't for a second feel sorry for himself. He wanted to take the time to process it all for sure. But he was also immediately focused on what he could do next to serve to be part of the process. We were up to the wee hours that night, reminiscing, missing Sonny, telling stories, maybe over a few cocktails. That, so that loss was certainly not gonna define his future. It didn't even define that night. If Brian were texting me now, he would not want us to be sad. He definitely, be want us, he definitely would not want us bragging on him. He'd be desperately trying to change the subject, I'm sure. 
but the impact he made is profound and something to be immensely proud of and celebrated. I know I'm proud of my friend. Brian was a true friend who stood by us in times of hardship, celebrated our victories as if they were his own. He was our confidant, our standing board, and a source of unwavering support. We lost a beloved father, husband, brother, public servant, and friend. But as you've heard, the impact he made is an incredible legacy. He left his mark on this community and everyone that was fortunate enough to know him. May Brian's memory continue to inspire us and uplift us as we navigate this world with Adam. Together, we can honor his legacy, support his family, and cherish the memories we shared. Thank you. Stand. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you always. Amen. Family, Alex.